Hello and welcome to another edition of Physics 264 Pre-Lab Tutorial. I'm Dr. Steve Brule. Today we're going to look at voltage and current regulators. First we'll see how voltage regulators are used to obtain precise DC voltages even when line voltages vary. Then we'll see how the LM317 chip uses a Zener diode to maintain a 1.5 volt reference voltage between two pins. We'll learn how we can take advantage of the reference voltage to create an adjustable regulated DC voltage that does not change with load or supply variations. And finally, we'll quickly breadboard the two circuits for this lab and learn how not to blow the fuses. Well, last week we learned how power supplies use a transformer, a rectifier circuit, and a smoothing capacitor to create a DC voltage for use in electronic devices. But did you know that line voltages from the electric utility company is, are allowed to vary between 110 and 125 volts AC RMS? That's why we often see uh, things rated at 117 volts because it's directly between those two voltages. What's worse is line voltages may vary up to 10% more than the allowable range due to overvoltage generation and line losses. So how can we obtain the exact voltages we need for our precious electronic devices? Thanks to Dr. Zener, Clarence Melvin Zener, he invented the Zener diode, and we're going to use this precise voltage that we get when we reverse bias a Zener diode to obtain a adjustable um, DC power supply that is regulated. So we already know that the when a diode is forward biased, we have about a 0.7 volt uh, drop in forward bias, but a Zener diode, if you reverse bias it instead of having no current forever it breaks down at a pr very precise voltage thanks to Dr. Zener. Well here is a Zener diode and that's the symbol for that and it's you see it's reverse biased here between the input pin and the adjust pin and uh, it's maintaining a 1.25 volt drop uh, across the diode and that's on the input of this device right here. That triangle is an operational amplifier. We're not going to go into that right now. It's later in the course. All we need to know for this lab is that the 317 is designed to maintain a 1.25 volt difference between those two pins. We'll make use of this reference voltage to make an adjustable voltage regulator. Well, how do we do that? Let's say that we have a 240 volt uh, resistor for our R1 voltage, which is maintained at 1.25 volts by the 317. By Ohm's law, we can find the current through R1 just using that simple equation. And we know that the current that goes through here must be the current through here because we're not getting any current drawn by the adjust pin. Um, so the voltage on R2 is just going to be that 5.2 milliamps, if we had 240 ohms there, um, times whatever R2 is. Let's say we had R2, it's 2.4 kilo ohms, then we'd have 12.48 volts dropping across R2, and we'd get an overall voltage of 13.73 volts. If we put a low resistor then on our circuit oh, that is with the 317, we will, the 317 will put out more current in order to uh, maintain that voltage, this reference voltage. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't depend on what our input voltage is as long as that input voltage is well above our output voltage. And if we instead, see here's where the, let me erase that here, the load resistor was put here in the circuit before, but what if we put the load resistor right here, we take it out of that point, then what's going to happen is this LM317 is going to keep the same amount of current going through the load no matter how we adjust the resistance of that load. So that's a regulated current um, uh, Creator. Okay, let's see how that we would breadboard this circuit. Here's an LM357, and you see one side of it is flat, and this we always read from the flat end, and uh, the pinouts are the adjust pin, the V-out pin, and V-in pin. Well, we're our diagram here calls for the that V-in pin on the left, so I'm just going to flip my LM357 
317 around so that this is my input. So then I'm going to have the same orientation in my breadboard as I do in my schematic diagram. So here I have in my breadboard, there's my input voltage coming in on the VN pin, which we know is now on the left. There it is on the left. And now I'm going to um, put this pin right here is the adjust pin and we see that the adjust pin has R2 going to ground so here's R2 going to our ground bus. Now I have to put a uh, R1 between the out the out pin and the adjust pin. Well how can you fit a, a big resistor like this in this tiny little um, region? Well first of all let's run a little jumper over and then we'll run the resistor back to that point. That way we've, we're keeping things spacious. Otherwise you get everything crammed in. If you tried to put the resistor right here, you're going to end up with leads coming out. And it's going to be like this. And then that lead might move over and hit some other lead. And you don't want that to be happening. Okay. Uh, next we need to... So we've got this resistor in and we've got this resistor in now. And now we have to connect our load resistor to this point which is V out. But how are we going to do that? It's tight in there. Well let's run another jumper. We run a jumper right over here and now we can take that load resistor and run it to our ground bus. Note that we are not using the uh, filtering capacitors here because our input voltage is already DC and it doesn't have any uh, variation on that so we don't need to smooth the output of our regulator. And now the middle uh, lug will be used to tap V out. So there's my V out tap right above the load. And I'm going to go right into that lug. Oh, now, so that that's, this will be our lug that we'll use when we want to measure the voltage on uh, that the LM317 is putting out. Now when we want to measure current we're going to have to break this circuit and this is what students often do wrong is they'll put their meter in parallel with that resistor and then it blows the meter because when we measure current we don't put a meter in parallel we have to put it in series so we have to break this in order to make that in series we have to break the circuit so here's the circuit going to the ground bus here but look over here I've broken the circuit I took this pin of the uh, are part of the resistor out and put it over here. So now current coming from the V out pin of the 317 has to go through that resistor, through our little breadboard a little bit, go through this terminal out to our meter and it comes back here into ground. So now the meter is in series with the load resistor and we're able to measure the current. And here is a nice picture of Michael measuring the current with the meter. Now let's breadboard the constant current regulator circuit for the LM317. Um, as before, we've got the LM317 turned around so its flat side is going that way so that we can have our VN pin on the left. I've run a little jumper and connected this R. Now our RS, it used to be called R1. Oh, I'm not going to go back there, but it was R1. Now this is the same thing as R1, but now we're calling it RS um, in the current regulator. It's coming around and connecting to the V out just like it's supposed to right here. And now we have to connect our load from this point right here to the ground bus. And there's the load resistor. But how are you going to measure anything? Because you're, what you're going to have to measure here is the current, not the voltage. But before we do that, let's see what Michael is doing. Michael has a uh, meter and he's put the two leads of his meter across this RS here to see if indeed the LM317 is putting out a 1.25 volts reference. Do you think it does? Not quite. It's 1.17 volts. So that's about 6% low. So that means that our calculated voltages and currents will be a little bit off from that. Okay, anyway, so here's how we break the circuit. This is how the circuit was connected before, where the load resistor was going right into the ground. But we take that out of ground. Now the circuit is broken here. Then we connect our meter in series with that. And now the, the uh, ammeter is connected in series and it's properly measuring the current through the load resistor, as we will do in our lab. In this lab, we'll be seeing... Uh, not just how the 
what voltages we get out for one circumstance, but we're going to be checking many different uh, resistors for the load, and we're going to try different input uh, voltages to see how the LM317 behaves when it has a different input voltage or a different load in various circumstances. So I know you're as excited as I am to get going. See you in lab. Bye-bye.